Hello there, Jan Lassert here and welcome to another video, project overview of Dashboard UI Kit 3.0 new landing page. In this video, I'll show you again all the designs, how it's built in Webflow and basically show you the whole kitchen and every detail about this project. This project is slightly different. Uh, it isn't hosted on Webflow hosting, it's hosted on third party server. So we are able to uh, run the live previews of all the React files and we are able to uh, manage our documentation from the code perspective. With that said, there is no Webflow CMS. It's basically a whole plain, uh, plain site and I'll show you everything about it right now. Let's look at how it's built. So this is it. We will be looking at this website, uh, how it was created. Uh, we will be looking at a couple of sub pages. We have uh, what's new, which is a change log, which doesn't have to be now finally on a Gumroad detail. Uh, we have a full preview, finally as a separate page, uh, not as a pop-up as it was previously built. And uh, yeah, we will be looking at all the details. Uh, so let's look at uh, how it's uh, how it's created. One more thing before we start. Uh, this is how it looks previously. Uh, we had this website uh, for over probably two years. Uh, it was doing um, quite a good job. We sold over a thousand licenses, uh, but there were always um, sort of little struggles. Full preview was as a uh, image. Uh, basically 10 images below each other uh, and as a pop-up it was b basically massive struggle for people to find even the the demos uh, which i mean it's it's a massive button but it wasn't super clear where they are uh, so we were getting a lot of uh, a lot of questions about this so that was the main reason uh, why we tried to create sort of a, a different structure uh, create uh, different logic of the website even though it's sort of still the same sort of selling page anyway this is the design some of you might even remember it from uh, one of my first videos uh, which uh, which are not anymore on this channel uh, where I was basically creating a style guide uh, so this is this is something what I'm always creating first as you might remember from uh, from bo both of these uh, project overviews uh, I basically have uh, all the buttons all the text sizes uh, here to be sure that uh, when I'm creating a style guide in uh, in Webflow I have all the elements uh, created and I'm sort of being aware of what's going to happen with uh, with all the elements uh, we have some sort of uh, landing page uh, which is the first part uh, I'll zoom it somehow uh, with a overview of uh, what's included in the package. Uh, we actually strip it down a little bit because it was probably way too many numbers. And as you can see, the section is quite big. Uh, and with two rows uh, of just the numbers, uh, we were again putting the content, which is more important as the design package or code package uh, below. And it could again hurt uh, the feeling of where to find these, uh, these informations. Uh, so then we have uh, some sort of details about uh, about the design package. Then we have a whole section for the React. We have now finally now better uh, demos uh, where you can see uh, all the all the screens uh, which are built in React. Then we have the documentation as again massive button and st getting started guide for people to uh, implement the site to their project. Then we have a CTA uh, roadmap some sort of behind uh, story about uh, about why are we doing this and then yet another CTA and a footer. Uh, then uh, to basically have a full preview uh, as I was showing you before uh, we, pro we created a uh, separate page for this then we have licensing agreement I haven't even showed you this one uh, and then the future uh, which I'm having here a note, is it even needed for a launch? Uh, we will have a couple of support videos and then we have a changelog with what's new and basically all the information which I uh, shared with you before. I have here a couple of uh, images which can then act as a uh, covers for the for the changelog images. So uh, it, it can give uh, the, even the changelog some sort of more uh, visual form. Then we have a 404 here uh, about this page doesn't exist. And uh, again, as you can see, there is a lot of going on uh, in my in, in my files. Uh, and that's because every time I'm creating something, uh, I want to be sure that I'm using uh, the right assets uh, for mobile, uh, for uh, desktop or for uh, tablet. 
Uh, so I'm having different kinds of uh, export uh, exportable assets uh, all over the place. Uh, we have here, for example, the OG image, Favicon. Uh, then we have, uh, for for example, here uh, exportable the home homepage uh, hero image, uh, and then we have all separate uh, four tabs of a uh, features pages. Uh, then I have here some sort of uh, image with uh, with the grid showing how it's uh, how the grid is built, and a couple of other small things uh, so I can uh, easily export it uh, for the website. I hope everybody is doing it this way. <laughs> I'm now a little bit ashamed that uh, this is how all the stuff which I'm showing you every time looks like, but this is how I'm uh, how I'm creating stuff, and I guess in my eyes this is the easiest way how to how to build something like that. Anyway, let's jump into Webflow and see how it's created. And this is this is the build. Again, uh, I'm following the same logic of the of the portfolio website. Uh, I try to uh, always do stuff with the, with this sort of logic. I have a section which is uh, wrapping the wrapping the website with 32 pixels uh, from side. So basically, whenever you go smaller, you still have these. 32 uh, pixels from side and then here 100 pixels uh, putting uh, from top uh, then I have a wrap which is uh, doing the max width of the website to uh, 1100 pixels and then I'm putting basically everything inside it I'm using a lot of uh, grid uh, which I find uh, that's the easiest way for me to, to build stuff because when I'm using Flexbox uh, with normal div blocks, uh, you need to somehow be always aware of uh, the last bit, which uh, will somehow need to have a uh, space. But with grid, uh, you basically have the space uh, on the exact number you need. You don't have to be worried about the last item uh, with some sort of C CSS uh, combo class or anything like that. That's why I feel like the grid is the is the easiest, and then again, it's really nicely shrinking. Once you once you go down, uh, you have uh, option to go into two rows and uh, create something uh, something easy easy like that. Uh, then we have uh, two uh, two blocks, uh, which are basically the code package and design package. And this is where it starts to get fun. Uh, you can see that there is plenty of little elements uh, and little details, except for this one. This one is, a, is an image. Uh, but you can see that there is tons of uh, small details, like this uh, code package deco, uh, these little dots, uh, all these small gradients, which uh, I loved. Uh, I loved two years ago. I loved it. Uh, I loved it when I uh, found it recently as well. So that's why I still have it here, uh, and I think it's pretty cool. But it was pretty good fun to uh, have these everywhere. Uh, and as you can see, they are basically uh, the whole structure of the whole website. So you can see the small details on all sides. Even this is basically created by all these small parts. So basically four parts to create this uh, little rocket, uh, which is the getting started guide. Uh, and all of this is basically just by CSS. Uh, and using div blocks, uh, none of this is an image, uh, which I think is pretty cool, uh, and it was good fun, uh, good fun to create. Then we have uh, basically tabs here, uh, which, uh, as you can see, uh, we can take a look at tab two, tab three, and we always have a illustration, small, uh, small info about uh, about the particular feature, and uh, a tab on the site so you can uh, you can go through it and then we have here uh, all the all the screens and basically uh, blocks which are then uh, linking to certain parts on a full preview uh, then we have a section for react uh, we have here the same sort of logic uh, for home feed which is linking to a live uh, live link on preview dashboard ui uh, com where you can actually go through all these uh, all these things uh, in details uh, on the live uh, React site. So this is how we're showing uh, users uh, the demos which uh, which they get if they purchase the package. Then we have CTA. Uh, we have two packages uh, which you can uh, which you can get. Uh, one is recommended. That's ob obviously absolute tag, uh, absolutely position tag, uh, and then we have a uh, roadmap. 
and a couple of other options and then we have a footer. So then uh, if you look at, uh, for example, the lic licensing agreement, that's a text page uh, with a lot of details uh, about, uh, about the licensing. Uh, and then we have, I think this is uh, another part which I really like is the header, uh, where I'm always trying to keep uh, a call to action on top uh, and then even the available for uh, the, the platforms. Uh, next to the next to the header, so even when you are on what's new, for example, on the changelog, you can get uh, straight forward the latest release. Uh, we have uh, we have a couple of releases, and this is here exactly what I was saying. Uh, each of the release have now a nice uh, cover image, uh, which I think makes the makes the change look uh, quite cool. Uh, and then we have full preview, uh, where you can check all the images finally. Uh, in uh, in a bigger bigger details uh, than it was previously on the image. Uh, so basically, when you open this on mobile, you can still at least see something on the image. It was basically shrinking it down, which wasn't really nice. Uh, and then we have here uh, click for the coded version, and you will get straight to the page uh, on the on the React package. Yes. So then the last bit, uh, which I'm, which is still work in progress, is the support page. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, work in progress. Uh, this is not live yet, uh, but it's uh, it's coming. Uh, and here uh, again, another C CTA, which uh, I think it's more appropriate in this case, is contact us by email if you have any issues. You don't need to go from support to a the, the latest re release. You can still do it by the menu, but uh, I guess in this case, I guess it's more appropriate to uh, have a contact button to uh, ease the pain of, uh, of all the users if they will have any struggles like I don't know for example thinking about if they ha if we are using Lavarel uh, framework or something instead of um, just HTML or, or React this is the most common questions which we are uh, getting anyway and then last little detail here which I really like is the latest update uh, which is straight away visible uh, on the home page and you can go uh, to the update which is going straight to the change lock. And that was the whole dashboard you like it 3.0 new landing page. I hope you like it. Uh, if you like the video, uh, obviously give it a like. Uh, please subscribe uh, if you like the, the content which I'm creating. And in the next videos, uh, I'll be focusing on creating a template for template marketplace on Webflow. We will be building our first dashboard for Webflow template. I think I said that template quite often now, so yeah. So yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, you can watch uh, the progress also on Instagram and Twitter. I'll leave the links in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.